Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Generally Speaking podcast. Um, we have a special guest today with us. Her name is Haley, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm from Dallas, Texas, but I'm a Texidian for sure. Okay, um, <laughs> nice. I went to UNF. I I think that's where I met you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I went to UNF for a couple of years and played volleyball there and okay. love Jacksonville. And I ended up going back to Texas for a bit, but I'm back. Um, I'm a former investigative reporter. Okay. And now at the state attorney's office over in Circuit 7. So we cover the counties, um, St. John's, Volusia, Flagler, and Putnam. Okay, so nice. So have you ever seen Law & Order? <laughs> I essentially work with the prosecutors and investigators uh, for That's the state amazing. in our circuit. You're awesome. But yeah, it's fun. They keep me on my toes, but I do the fun stuff. So the multimedia okay. type stuff. So social media and community engagement. Okay, so awesome. Okay, yay. Well, um, I just want to let everyone know why we're kind of... why. I I wanted you on my show. Um, also, I'm very grateful you're here right now. Um, <laughs> Thanks for having me. Right, we were supposed to get this done last week, but it kind of, you know, life happens. But um, if you aren't familiar with my show, I want to just have real people on here and have real conversations. And I think it's cool that I've kind of watched your... Um, in the least creepiest way possible, your kind of glow up. I feel like you already had an amazing like, vibe and aura when I met you and then... Obviously, through social media, we've stayed in touch, and um, and your growth is has been amazing, and I think that's inspiring, and that's why I've reached out to you to um, to be on my show, and I'm really grateful. Um, I think it's really cool that you were um, investigative investigative reporter, right? Yes. Was it Action News, Jax, or I what? Was, what was it? Technically, I was First Coast News. First Coast so News. Twelve or twenty five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, and then you're working with the state attorney's office right now. Mm -hmm. How is that? Do you love it? It's been very different. I take lunches now. Um, so that's <laughs> you have a lunch. Okay. Uh, yeah, and I have personal time and holidays. So it's been, you know, That's a amazing. lot of pros and I feel really appreciated and valued. Obviously, again, I'm not an investigator or attorney. I'm doing okay. something a little bit different for the office. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. But, you know, everyone's really accepting of it and it's been fun and get, again, very different, but I've enjoyed it so far. So. Okay, cool. Um, so w where did we meet? Um, I can't remember. I think... I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to get the answer to that, I too. was, like, thinking before so, this, like, I was trying to, like, get a little backstory. Because you went to JU. Yes, yeah, so I went to JU, and, and you went to UNF. I think you were friends oh, with no, yeah. CC, right? Carly! Yeah, Carly yes. Cates! That's my best friend, right, yes. Right, right. Yes. So, okay. you were friends with Carly, and Coco's still my best friend. So I know, I see Coco together. all the time. So, I think they were the ones who connected us. I think, I think so, too. I, I now, it's, it's all coming together. But, oh, my God, yeah, Carly. Carly's my best friend. The cook is still your best friend. Yeah. I was just um, before this, just trying to like kind of piece things together, like where we where we met and how we reconnected in a very or organic way. I sure. think a very definitely organic way. The parties and all at UNF <laughs> yeah. and JU and like the weirdest times ever in college. Like the weirdest, but the, so simple. So and good. simple, and like I look back at it now, and I'm like, dang, like I wish everyone could experience college only yeah. for like. For purely sometimes like the experience factor of like sometimes you do things that you, like in, in a safe way I'm talking about like you do things that you like bring you out of your shell and you meet so many good people and you get so many good connections. So yeah. no, that's awesome. I was uh, I was I was just trying to think about that before. Um, so have you grown to love Jacksonville? Oh Let's yeah, tell I us came back it. for a reason. So when did you move here? When it, when was that again? So it was 2018. I was 17 at the time uh, when I got my scholarship to play at UNF. So it was wild to move at 17 and you know experience something completely different across, okay. across the nation from Texas. And so I, I lived there for two years, uh, or lived here in Jacksonville for two years, and um, I really enjoyed UNF, and I love Jacksonville. I just got really burnt out with volleyball. I played right. indoor and beach. And I, I feel that on so many levels I with was, sports. I was over it, so I ended up transferring to Texas Christian University, and I went to journalism school there. Graduated. How was that? How was majoring in journalism? It was, I loved my program and it was really Aww, small. Oh, that's and amazing. It's, it's a grind. I mean, there were some late <laughs> nights. Um, it's different than, you know, doing sciences or maths, but um, it was, it was a grind. And then I started my career in West Texas. So if you ever seen Friday Night Lights, that's yeah. where I was for a year and a half. Oh, so dang. Okay. It was a, 
awesome experience. It kind of felt like grad school a little bit. I worked really hard, but I got to experience, you know, life in a new place with a bunch of young journalists. And then I got back here as soon as I could. Okay. Yeah. Because you love Jacksonville. So I wanted to, um, just like with Fernando on my, on my first episode, shout out to him. Um, he's the best. (laughs) Yeah, he is. He is one of the best people on, on this entire planet. Um, a big focus of generally speaking is, um, service industry and social life and, um, you know, having real people and real conversations. With that said, um, we all go out and drink and have a good time. What is your favorite bar at the beach? Let's hear it. See, I might be Let's biased. Let's do top three because... Of, yeah, I was going to say, speaking of Fernando, I'm probably a little biased, honestly. I love the rec. Oh, yeah, um, okay, the rec. <laughs> I love the rec, and I would say probably... Um, after that, lynches and surfer. Lynches and surfer, okay. They all offer like different vibes, so it kind of just depends on like what I'm up for, I guess. Yeah. So I would say those are probably my go-tos. Your go-tos, sure. okay. No, that's a good question. All right, that's a good answer. I feel like a lot of people uh, definitely frequent lynches. Lynches is fun. They always have a band. Uh, I, mangos. I just, I just discovered the outdoor area, and I was like, "Wow, what? yeah!" Like, a where have you been, Ailey? Oh I my know. goodness! <laughs> well, we're gonna go out and, yeah. and just explore that time. Um, but no, Lynches is a popular one. Mangos. Uh, I feel like is like a end of the night. Yeah, I end up there sometimes too. Like end of the night bar. Yeah. Um, and so I used to manage Ritz Bricks and Lemon oh, for yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah for about two, three years. And I loved going to the Reds when I was working there. It was amazing. And then I'd go to Shim, wine bars, got jello shots. Um, I don't know if you like wine bar. Yeah, I do. There's I not do. really a bad place, honestly. Right. There's not really one. Um, were you, you obviously went to Habibi's when it was there or did you I not? I never did. Oh my God. <laughs> Habibi's. I never was, did. I feel like it was a hidden gem. <laughs> So I never had but I like ID, hookah, but... you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, but I th- I thought it was a pretty cool place, and yeah, I, I don't know what happened to it. About it, yeah, I think it just kind of went under eventually. Yeah, a lot of places after COVID, COVID, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't. Um, yeah, didn't go back after that. Okay, well, cool. That's a that's a good top three. I like it. Um, I have some more questions for us. All right, favorite restaurants. Oh wow! In well, Jacksonville, number one. And it might be basic again, but we'll see. Um, Takaloo. So Takaloo is a good one. Me and my best friend group, like we always end up there, like pretty much every weekend. Takaloo is a pretty good place. Um, I mean, it's just talking about good vibes. It's like yeah, the ambiance is amazing. Everyone's so friendly there. You know, there's happy hour, but honestly, everything's kind of like well-priced. Anyway. Right, right. Yeah. So anytime you go, even if it's a busy Saturday night, like I'm not breaking the bank. And to have a good meal. Yeah, so no. I oh, really like I love loop. them. Ab- absolutely. Have you been into One Ocean? Um, I've never eaten there. You should definitely I come saw eat you the there. Other day, though. I know. <laughs> Yay! I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> After work. No, you should definitely come in. You and your family. Yeah, One I Ocean would love is, to. is an awesome place. A lot of people really don't know about it, which is kind of cool. Yeah, no, I would love to. I mean, there's a lot of places. I think about this all the time. I kind of just go to the same places because I love them, but there's so many things to experience, I mean, right. that I haven't already. So I definitely will put it on the list because I keep trying to push myself to yeah, try new do places. It. You can definitely do it. Okay. Well, that's amazing. So how how is your, your dating life going, Haley? Oh, gosh. Let's, let's hear it. I asked Fernando the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys, and he got so phil- philosophical with it. I love it because I was like, I actually go to him for a lot of details. He is advice. amazing. I won't lie to you, but y'all, it is tough out there. Okay, like, it is definitely <laughs> tough out there for a G. So I, I, but on the real, like I had a couple of long serious relationships, okay. and um, recently kind of started, you know, casually dating and being a little bit more open to a new relationship and. I actually did meet a guy a couple months ago um, Yay. <laughs> that I kind of hit it off with like on every different level. Like, okay. Emotionally. Did you meet him through like Bumble or something? So yeah, actually it was Bumble. Oh my God, this is the tea. <laughs> Give it to me. So I have a lot. I, honestly, I could talk about that. I hope he does not hear this ever. It's but okay. We guys, can make code names for no, any type knows, of... If he watches it, he'll know it's <laughs> who I'm talking about. But um, I met him through Bumble, and we just hit it off immediately, which I can never... I really haven't used apps so much. Okay. 
But yeah, he surprised me. I hit it, I hit it off with him emotionally, physically, spiritually. Like we had amazing intellectual conversations. Oh my god! Yay. Yeah, I know. I was, love that. It was crazy, and we hung out for a couple months. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> he had to leave Jacksonville. His, oh no! I know he's chasing his career across the world uh, okay. next month, and so I actually did know pretty early on into hanging out with him that he was going to be leaving. And so I kind of you know weighed the options like I can continue hanging out with him because it brings me happiness, or you know to save my heart like you know I can just you say hey it's best to just go our separate ways now. Aww. But I chose to hang out with him um, until he left, and I have no regrets honestly like. Yay! He, well, I'm glad he got to experience that before he left. I know, and like the way I think of it is this: is you know maybe one day you never know what'll happen. Maybe we'll reconnect, and if not, he at least taught me. Yeah, he you know, taught you some some good I things, want some good lessons. Exactly. That's amazing. So. Oh my god, I love that for you. Yeah, I asked Fernando the same question, and we got into some some good stuff. So that was a good story. Yeah. Thank you. No, I think I really did learn and a lot from him, um, just in general. But I grew, you know, with him in the couple. When was the last time you dated someone before that? Um, about a year ago. Okay. I broke up um, with my ex uh -huh. of a little over two years. And so that was difficult. We had been long distance. It's so heartbreaking. We had been long distance for a while and we were really close. And I, I love him to this day, okay, of yeah. course, but it's just one of those things where it was just a difficult time. I was struggling a lot um, during that time too, just personally with like my mental health and stuff. Right, yeah. and so there was a lot of things that happened there, but um, yeah, so I've learned a lot That's the good. last year or so about myself yeah, and about what I want. No, that guys, is good. So. I feel like I'm going through like the same thing. Okay. With just like improving myself. And I've gone through a lot with kind of like the same type of, not obviously the same, but similar like experiences with dating. And I don't know. And I s talked about this before. Um, you know, the dating scene around us and around Jacksonville. And I think there are stand up people out there. You know, I think they're men and women. Um, you know, when you hear people say in Jacksonville, they're like, oh, I need to move away. I'm just not going to find no, what I need yeah. here. But I think that's a mindset, though, at the same time. Yeah. Because I don't think the mindset of like, well, this is just never going to change or do it for me or predicting something that hasn't happened yet. And then um, exiting the situation without even giving it a shot, you know. So, but no, I've been working on my own things and I... It's, it's, it's rough out here. <laughs> yeah, it is. It it's is. It's not easy. And you are, I love that I'm talking to a girl this time about this because it's, it's difficult and going out to the bars and things like that. Yeah. Can not only just be so mentally taxing because like, I love being social. I yeah. love hanging out with all my friends and like sometimes like the only time we can see all of us at one spot is at a bar at yeah, night. Yeah. Everyone's busy usually during the day. But then you meet like the like the craziest guys. <laughs> yeah. And, and ideally <laughs> you, want, you want to meet a guy organically. That's the right, ideal. The ideal. Right? That is the idea. But, and I think people kind of shit on that yeah. concept. But like it's it works. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not gonna give up. Yeah. You know what I'm either. saying? I'm not gonna give up. But I'm there just... are some crazy ass motherfuckers. <laughs> In this place. Yeah, I I think I've got that point where it's like I am <laughs> I, I did have a beautiful experience recently and I am at that point where I just bought a condo, you know, I have a new job and I, I'm just like, ah, like I'm good. I wanna come see the condo. Yeah, you can. I'm moving oh my in this God. week actually. But um so I'm kind of at that point where it's like I'm content actually. So it's like of course, you know, hopefully one day I'll meet a, I'll run into a guy that okay, yeah. I hit it off with, but right now I'm kinda like, eh. Like less concerned right. about it, I guess. No, too, I, I think nice. I'm going through the same thing. Like I'm just kind of get every trying to get everything started, and I feel like every little distraction that like distracts me even more from where I now am mm -hmm. or trying to be or like you know get you know moving forward. I'm like, don't do that. Like just let me do it. Let me, <laughs> you know. So I've been trying to just kind of letting it like you know letting it vibe like how you were saying. Yeah, it's good. And letting it be organic and everything. But these bars be so crazy yeah. and but they're fun and I meet a lot of my friends I've met a lot of my friends down in Jack's Beach Ponte Vedra yeah Neptune um everyone's just so friendly like I've thought that since I went to UNF yeah. everyone here it's sort of that like southern mix with like Florida chillness that so, is that's described perfectly yeah, honestly like, er everyone will say there's hi like to you, some yeah you know everyone's willing to be your friend and I what love is it, it. southern 
like a the southern charm the charm with like the yeah. Florida surfer Flo- vibe. Okay, yeah. You know? I wouldn't have to agree with that. For I don't sure. know if that's the best way of explaining it, but <laughs> Okay. Um so since I'm a bartender, I'm gonna start doing these segments on here. Um once I figure out like um once as we progress as a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um but I wanna have because I'm a bartender and I wanna ask you all about the drinks that you love yeah. and you know, what do you do in certain situations at a bar, like as a patron. Mm-hmm. Um I'm assuming you've never bartended or have you? No. Okay, cool. So I just want to yeah. direct my I questions. Mean, I wish. And, <laughs> right, no, so I just want to direct my questions in the right area. Um, okay, so you go up to the bar. Let's say you're at Ritz. Okay. Okay, what are you ordering? It's um, Thursday. Probably just a vodka <laughs> sprite, honestly. Vodka sprite? Yeah, I don't vodka know. Vodka sprite with lime? I don't even need don't, the lime. You don't need the lime. Okay, no. that's fine. Yeah, I keep it simple usually, like at a bar like that. I think. I'll All right. What about simple. like, um, what about like a fancy, fancy bar? Like, I can't think of one right now. Well, but maybe like the Mador. I would say. Have you ever been there? If I'm no, I haven't. Oh my gosh, I Eleven would, South. Yes, I've been there. Okay, let's say you go um, there. I think I get wine when I go there normally. Wine's wine's the way. Yeah, the wine wine there is good. Um, I don't know. I like sangria a lot, so I order a lot of sangria. Sangrias are amazing. And espresso martinis. And we make the mules. best at Mon Ocean. You need yes, to come. Yes, I. That's what I had the other day. Oh my goodness! Oh, I probably made so it for good. you. Yeah, you did. Oh, it was okay, awesome. good. <laughs> it was awesome. This is working. Yeah, and then I would say like, yeah, sangria. You like red or white better? Red. What type of red? Red wine. Yeah. What type of red? Like, uh, you like a cab. I would say like. I like blends, cabs, or Malbecs. Nice. If that's how you say it. I'm, I'm sure. a wine fiend. I love wine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Let's talk wine. <laughs> she goes, I love wine. No, Oh, I... we forgot to do the... Oh, that was supposed to be our clap for Haley. There it is. Um, it's okay. Um, no, I actually, I probably need to cancel it because I need to save some money, but I have a wine membership currently. Oh I, my God, don't ever cancel it. I got drunk um, <laughs> at, the, at the wineries in Texas and Fredericksburg and I was like, all right, let's go. And I did this my, wine membership and I love it, but it's it's costly. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Is it like a monthly type thing? Um, it's. I think it's a couple times a year and it's great wine. I love it, but I just bought a condo. So I'm trying to figure out no, ways yeah. to save money. But. I can kind of like sublease your subscription or something and I'll yeah. just get the wine. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah, no, it's amazing. I love it. I mean, it's probably not like Napa Valley wine, but it's no, I, good. I'm probably not the biggest person. Unless it's like obviously like a nice place. Yeah. Or things like that. But I love wine just as much as you do. And okay. You like red too. I right? love red. Okay, there you go. I do love my whites, but reds. See, I just. I my whites to like have whites, to be. But... Yeah. See, I never liked them like at all, but now I'm starting to get like a taste for them. But definitely reds all day. Yeah, or rosé. Like if someone's like, I prefer wine or white wine, I'm I say okay, rosé, please. Just a rosé. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. Have you ever had like, um, like Dom? No. Like champagne, Dom Perignon. I don't think so. Oh my god, it's like very expensive champagne. And we're, I should have brought a bottle for us to pop in here. That would have been amazing. <laughs> but no, we'll get we'll get a bottle. Like I I didn't know that like cheap champagne, like. I knew there was a difference, obviously, yeah. but there's like a difference, difference when I you mean, drink the between, best champagne. It's like the yeah. most amazing thing. Even between like Prosecco and like the cheap stuff, like it's so much of a difference. Anyway. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, but. sorry, I was trying to see our feed here. See who's logging in here. All right. Okay. This is what, uh, this is what my friend Raphael wanted me to ask you too. Um, your reporter life. Let's see. Sorry, guys. Raphael asked a question last week. So Raphael is one of my good friends. He's amazing. Shout out to him. All right. So a uh, question from him. This is a long one, but it says, uh, it seems like every time you turn on the news, it's depressing. It's bad news. What's your advice on navigating that? You formerly being a reporter. We all need to keep a pulse on what's going on in our community and nation, but at what cost to our mental health? As a young professional woman working for an established or worked for an established news uh, station, I'd imagine there's a lot of your colleagues were there for a long time or were there for a long time. How did you make yourself stand out? What's your advice for young professionals entering that workforce? So the first question, we'll go back. Um, What's your advice on navigating mental health um, with all the bad news that you see on the news? Um, 
And obviously you try and take everything with a grain of salt. But sometimes it's just overwhelming. So how, how do you navigate that? That's an awesome question. Yeah, it definitely is. And I've talked about this quite a few times with people because I I love that he wants to stay informed because a lot of people just don't right. try to consume news at all, which in my opinion is just yeah not what you should do. <laughs> like you need to stay somewhat informed. But I understand, you know, when we have mass shootings like we've had lately, that's tough to listen right, to yeah. and watch and, and hear about. And so I think you just have to kind of make a space for it. So it's, you know, if it, whether it's when you get home for like the first 30 minutes of your time being home to like, just kind of look at the news of the day, feel like you're informed and just shut down your, like, don't get all the no like the news notifications, like shut down, you know, the TV, don't, right, yeah. don't have it a constant thing. Okay, you yeah. just kind of separate that time to consume news. Don't okay. let it be circulating around you all the time. Okay, I feel like I'm definitely guilty of the person that's like, I'm not watching the news, you know, which, yeah. but at the same time, I want to be informed. Yeah. Like I, I, like I want to be educating myself as much as I can. Yeah. Because I think it becomes hypocritical when it's kind of all or nothing. I mean, you kind of have mm -hmm. to dive into things that you might not agree with, but to still educate yourself that they're yeah. there, you know? Yeah. So I think that's good advice to kind of make a space for it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think that's, that's, that's actually really kind of applicable. Make a space for it. And then it doesn't have to be a constant all day, everything yeah. uh, all day, every day thing. Right. Well, that's, that's an awesome, that's awesome advice. Yeah. Um, okay. So then the next question he says, um, I'm a mad, I'd imagine there's a lot of your colleagues were there for a long time. How did you make yourself stand out? Well, that is very true. In that type of workforce. Because so, that's nerve-wracking, right? I mean... Oh, yeah. I mean, because, again, like, I was 21 when I was on TV for the so first cute. time. So cute. I saw you in oh, my gosh. in my uh, my break room at work. I yeah. was like, that's my friend. Yeah, 21 when I started <laughs> in West Texas. And so, you know, you start in those smaller markets for a reason because you're learning and growing. And there, there are some veterans in those smaller markets. But, yeah, when you get to a market like Jacksonville... Yeah, there's veterans. There's all the anchors essentially are pretty much double my age, you know. Right. And so it was it was difficult, but you just have to like remember that you're there for a reason, and okay. you know just continue to like grow, like you wouldn't. Yeah. Career. Was it intimidating at all? Like, I mean. Yeah, I mean, it was a little bit. I mean, I wanted. To and as a female, I mean, oh, yeah. especially like, yeah. is that a male more male dominated? It's more female, but. I mean, which can also be intimidating, though, on itself, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. I think it's just it is a challenge. And I mean, there's a lot of people that are confident on TV. I never really was. I I mean, I got there. You, you know? got there. I got yeah, the no, right. But for a long time, I wanted to get pee my pants every right. time I went on TV. Oh, no, I can it's only imagine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, like overcoming, you know, things that you're not as strong at, like, in any career uh, is something that you have to battle. And so you just have to remember you're there for a reason. You know, you're a good journalist, whether it's the writing part or the interviewing part, and then you just have to work on everything else that you want to improve on. Did you love the interviewing part? Oh, I loved like it. Like when you you interviewed other people, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You love that? Oh, yeah, like, I loved it. This I mean, is Haley Nicole Harrison. <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. No, I loved it. I mean, there's nothing like... What if you are in 6060, girl? I would, yeah. Oh my God. I could I totally pitch to you to be on that. Minutes. Okay. I, yeah. We're going to make that happen for you. I, yeah. I would love it. I mean, <laughs> maybe I'd still be in the industry, but um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, there's nothing like being a journalist. I like, truthfully, I woke up every day and got to like meet people and like, you know, learn about them and learn about their experiences, yeah. be on my feet all day. And then I just told their stories. That's what I did every day. It was, mm -hmm. it was awesome. And I was passionate about it, but right. there's a lot of parts of the industry that aren't so glamorous. No, I, I, absolutely. Um, so eventually, you know, the cons outweighed the pros yeah. staying in. So. Right. You know, absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I, it's definitely still though encouraging that you, you committed, you know, and you tried something out and yeah. it, before, you know, giving up on something, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. instead of just saying, this isn't for me or, and right. like you went, you went all the way with it and you're very inspiring to young to young females Thank so you. yeah and that you know hopefully someone watching this a young girl anyone yeah. you know she obviously didn't think she was perfect at you know or very skilled and you know going before a camera and talking to thousands i mean millions of people potentially you don't see their faces but you were you, you know, know you there. feel it through the camera <laughs> like i can feel 
Like you feel like you can, (laughs) yeah. Like we feel it. So like I understand, or no, I don't understand, but I could see, and I think it's encouraging, like how far you've come with that. So thank you. (laughs) We love it. That's we're supposed to use that at the beginning. Yeah, no, and it was it was it was tough. Even though I knew Mm -hmm. for my mental health, and again, you know, I have holidays with my family now. I have more personal time, more appreciation and respect for my um, bosses and colleagues. Okay. So many pros. It was still difficult having to give up, you know, something I was so passionate about. And I, I was, you know, worried about thinking I was giving up. But right. you know what? I'm you always have that little, yeah. And, um, yeah. I'm still helping people in a different way. Um, okay. So, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, you still have like, that's, I went through a similar situation when I like stopped going to college and, you know, you always want to, you know, make your parents proud. And, yeah. you know, I, I felt for the beginning of those stages that I was that, like, am I giving up? You know, like, did I try my best? Like, did I do everything I could on my end? And I did. Yeah. So, and that was like why I fully could accept moving on from that part of my life because I did try it out. Yeah. I did everything I could, you know, and so... And everyone's success looks different. Everyone's success looks so different. And I wish that someone would have told me that right out of high school, you know, because like our parents only know what they know and they're yeah. amazing people. You know, they, they guide you in the best places that they were raised mm-hmm. to go, you know? Yeah. So, but now like we know like college doesn't necessarily mean success, right? you know, and vice versa. There's no positive correlation with that. And now we know that, like you said, success looks different with everybody. And I think that's, that's pretty fucking beautiful. Yep. <laughs> that's, it that's is amazing. and people need to know that because i think that there is a, a pressure on people to think oh if i don't go to college like right. i failed but it's, it's no like there's a lot of careers and there's different so things many things out there having to go to college like you don't, right. you don't need that history degree or right. that you, you know yeah there's t- welding like there's so yeah. many things out there that there's welding can, i well, love that I yes know, it's just like the first example no I was, that came it's to funny because i was thinking of the same thing oh wow <laughs> and you said it, <laughs> but, but no, yeah, that's, that's exactly right. There's so many just different paths and lives yeah. now. And, and you're killing it. So thanks girl. You know, I'm trying. Hopefully you're looking back on it now and saying, Hey, yeah, look how far I've come. I am trying. I got here. This is my second episode. Yeah. And so I'm like, you know, looking back like six months ago, I'm, I'm trying my best girl. That's, that means yeah. a lot. So that's all yeah. you can do. So, all right. So, Raphael, one more question. What's your advice for young professionals uh, entering the workforce? I think kind of going back to a little bit what I said is, you know, you're not going to be perfect coming out of college or high school or whatever it right. is. Yeah, you, okay, yeah. you have to you have to know you're going to fall on your face like right. 500 times before you, you know, walk across and feel walk across a work day and feel like you killed it, you know? Yeah. So you have to like be open to failing and, and credit, like honestly criticism, I, especially as a journalist, we got a lot of that and I was able to handle it, you know, as being, you know, I was a former athlete and so I took it pretty well, but there are a lot of people that don't. And so you have to know that people are giving you that criticism because they want you to learn and, and grow. And so, you know, let, let yourself fall down a million times right? Yeah. and know that it's okay. And that you're only going to get better as time you're only going to on. get better. And when you, you're just putting the steps forward that you need to. You yeah. Know? And just, I think it is important again, like luckily I've been passionate about the work that I've done. I know a lot of people say, you know, I don't, right. I just work to pay the bills, but I think having a little bit of passion for what you do is super important. Cause if not, you're just going to feel like you're miserable 40 days, 40 hours a week. Right. I think, so. I think it's also to creating that mindset to start everything you do with the, with the like core, what's the word? Like with the initiative to be passionate about it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I don't know if I worded that right, but like, and even simple things in your life, if, if you don't want to do it and it doesn't bring you happiness, you know, then, and you're not passionate about it, you don't have to do it. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And obviously there's going to be like, like challenges in every path that we take, you know, yeah. obvi- obviously, but you can still love something through that. You know what I'm saying? But right. if something's like a burden all of the time, I'm like, you gotta do it, bro. Yeah. You don't have to do it. It's okay you to can, change paths. You can I literally, just did it and yeah, it was scary, I, but, you and you know, did it and you, and it and, worked out and <laughs> at least so far. <laughs> She's like, I got a condo. It's working out. That's amazing though. That's really cool. Thank you. Where's yeah. it? Is it in Jack's beach or somewhere? It's in somewhere? Beach. Oh yeah. yes. You're so, fancy. 
Uh, I don't know about that. Oh but... my God, you're a Fata Vidra miss. I love it. Yeah. That's so, amazing. So I'm excited. Okay, so Raphael said also, um, what do you think makes, I guess we touched on it a little bit earlier, but what do you think uh, about Jacksonville is so special? I think... He's asking great questions. This, yeah, thank you, this is, Raphael. This is great. <laughs> so I feel like, and I want to talk about this too, because I feel like a lot of people kind of, I mean, for the lack of a better word, shit on Jacksonville sometimes. Oh my God, I said that in the and first episode. It makes me sad because- I said that, I said that in the first episode. I know like me and Coco and so many of my friends move here and fall in love. I don't think yeah. people realize how much of a gym Jacksonville is. There's so many different areas that is kind of for everybody. Like you can live in Riverside or San Marco or the beaches or there's so many different areas that like are so unique and make people happier. Yeah. You know, if you want, if you live at the beach and you want to do something different, you can go to a different area and experience something different yeah. for the weekend. No, yeah, there's so many little places. So much, it offers so much. And um, again, I think it's just like that, that Southern The Southern charm, charm with the surfer boy. Every Everyone's nice. Like you don't meet a stranger. You don't meet yeah. a mean person in Jacksonville. Right. At least the yeah. I hang out, but. No, I, I mentioned that so. in my first podcast. I was like, I love this place. And everyone shits yeah. on it. I'm like, why are you shitting on it? <laughs> I I completely agree. I'm like, there's so many things to do. I can't, I don't have enough time in the day. And, I and think, there's so much good food. And I, Yeah, oh my gosh. Ugh. There's so much good food. And I think a lot of people who shit on it are from here, and but they stay here. I'm literally. Like, you're staying here for a reason. What did we just say? Literally. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> you're staying here for a reason. So, I mean, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> all right, well, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, that's an awesome answer. Um, so how do you, again, from Raphael, how do you maintain a work-life balance? Well, now- Or try to maintain. Now it's a lot easier, because again, as a reporter, you don't have a lot of personal time. You're kind of always taking calls. You're always running out to scenes early, things like that. You're working holidays. You're working, you're on call on weekends. Now I pretty much strictly work um, eight to 4.30. Um, besides like a few, you know, days here and there. And so I feel like it's easier. I can wake up and work out in the morning. I can work out right after work and then go get drinks with friends. Right. Um, I just think, you know, keeping work at work as much as you can is super important because you, again, I learned the hard way. Like I didn't have a lot of personal time to do what I wanted to do. Um, you know, the last two years, um, before quitting being a reporter, and I lost sight of how important that personal time is to not only to socialize and do the things you want with your friends and family, yeah. but also to recharge because let's face oh it. Oh my goodness. That is exactly what I'm going through right yeah, now. Like work can beat you up like, and you don't want it to beat you up because then you're going to oh present it, you know? And so you have to, you know, find those boundaries as much as you can. I know it's hard sometimes. It was almost impossible as a reporter, but. <laughs> no, that's no, I feel like just what you said work is a lot and i have struggled trying to find a work-life balance before yeah and it can be very mentally taxing and draining and physically yeah. like a lot of physical um, challenges that progress from being overworked often are neglected and those can lead to mental you yeah. know obviously um challenges that you have so Work, leaving work at work is great advice, I as think. As much as you can. As sure. much as you can. I understand, like, sometimes it will bleed over, you know, especially if right. you're trying to help out at your team and, you know, you got to make calls and things like that. I get that. And, I, and I've been really busy the last couple months. And so something I actually, with Coco's advice last week, I, instead of just trying to say, oh, I'm going to work out after work today, right. I, I, like, signed up for classes like workout classes. And I was like, all right, I'm going to do this class this day, this class. So I like had a oh, goal. Sign, yeah. If you yeah. sign up for a class, I yeah, realized like, this young at a young age. Yes. It helps a lot. Like actually like having yourself, hold having yourself a schedule right. and writing it down. So there's no excuse to like get that workout right. in or like make sure you, you know, hang out with your friend that day or whatever it is. I, I do like, I have like the big calendar, uh, I guess like posts, on my on my wall and it makes a difference when you write things down oh yeah and you it's literally like you see it every day yeah and you're and you're like okay well i have to get it done and signing up for things like you said so i used to try yeah. and do yoga like every like two three times a week but 
I'd always tell myself, well, I'm just gonna do the pop-in class or like the walk-in. Right. But like, you know, I'm always like, oh, I'll go to the next one and like miss one. Right. But if I paid for one ahead of time, or like I set this date, then I'm definitely going. And you get those emails and it's and like, all right, emails. your class is later today. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> say less, I'll be there. Um, I'll be there, I already paid a deposit. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely be there. Yeah. Well, no, that's that's awesome advice because I know that for me personally, I've I've struggled with like a work-life balance, yeah, it's but I'm getting there. I'm getting there, yeah. so I'm glad we can overcome this together. Definitely. Um, behind the camera is pretty intimidating for most. How do you first get over the fear of the camera? Well, it's kind of, it's like riding a bike, honestly. You just yeah. have to keep doing it. It's it's sad to say, at least for me, because again, I was probably more on the nervous side. Some people are natural and they just go on camera and they can, you know, tell a whole story and be fine. But it was nerve wracking. I think just doing it over and over again and kind of finding tactics, like for me, it I went from like writing full scripts that I wanted to say on air to kind of like doing bullet points and okay, yeah. kind of like giving myself goals for the live shot versus like, you know, specific things I wanted to say. And so I think that helped a lot, um, but it's intimidating. I mean, it's just an intimidating thing. I mean, I think even the people who are as least anxious as it gets still might catch a butterfly or two, right. you know? And I was an anchor for a while in West Texas, and, like, I hated that more because you're just kind of, like, reading off script after script, and it's all written out. And Is that easy to read? Tell me about that. Is it, like, on a computer screen? Yeah, yeah. So, and you're like, yes and no. What if you mess up? Like, what if, I know, exactly. What if you fuck up? I know, so that's what I think about the whole time. It's, like, you, you want to, you wanna like, read it how it's written but like you really should go off script and be you know human more organic with it but and the feel like being a reporter in the field was so much easier for me because i was like on my feet and i was again right. kind of reading off of bullet points versus a full script and so i kind of made it my own and i didn't feel like you know kind of a prisoner to the script which helped me a lot Plus, okay yeah. you know, you're not sitting at the desk like this you know you're like on right. your feet you're moving okay yeah, no, so. that's actually pretty cool. Yeah. I was like, oh, what do you do if you mess up? So You just keep going. You just keep going. You just don't cuss on air. <laughs> <laughs> At least on TV, that's for sure. Oh, my yeah. gosh. But Have you done that? Do you no, accidentally do just, it? I've seen colleagues do it, but you get fined, so... Yeah. Like, oh my god, like a big fine? I don't know what I don't know what they're you're like. You're like, I wouldn't know because I'm an one, angel. <laughs> that's just the one thing you're taught not to do. So Okay, well that's amazing. Yeah. So did you ever rewatch your broadcast? Oh yeah, we had to. Oh you had to oh, all the time. I hated it. Yeah. I hated it, but we did to like learn. We had consultants at my um first station uh that worked for our company at okay. first station. And it was interesting. We'd watch it back together and I mean, it's just part of learning, I guess. And you kind of figure out, you know, where you mess up or what you can improve. And it's, but I just, I don't like watching myself. So I probably yeah, won't even I feel watch like this a lot of people honestly. are like that, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't like it, but, um, it, I did obviously just to learn and grow, but, um, right. Like you have to like kind of do it. Like at yeah. first, like my voice, I'm like, oh my God. And everyone's like, I love your voice. I'm like, motivation. Yeah. I love it. I love those people that are like, just do it. Yeah, so, no, it's, but and, I feel the same way. In that. Yeah, and the more you do it, the better. And the more you do it, and you're like, it's normal, right? You know, okay, cool. Well, that's awesome. Do you like the sound of your voice? Gosh, no. I think it's not like no. a man. I, right? Like every time I hear my voice, I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, guys. I know, and I lose. I don't my know voice. if I like it. I lose my voice a lot too. I lose my voice every day. So often, look, it just cracked right there. <laughs> Oftentimes, <laughs> I would have to go on air and, like, I barely had a voice, and it was mm -hmm. terrible. Like, no matter how much tea I drank or whatever that day, it was still raspy and just a mess, but I had, <clears> it was my job. I had to go on air. And, and you're like, I sound... I sound... Like a crazy, I'm not going to say it, but... Some sort of sea animal. Some sort of... Like. <laughs> One time, too, I mean, it was funny because I actually did, sort of towards the end of my contract... I got like an allergic reaction. I used a new product on my face and my eyes like puffed up. Like I could barely open my eyes. Oh no. And I woke up the next morning and I said, oh my gosh. No. Like I felt fine. I just had like the worst allergic reaction. I texted my What producer. was it? What was it from? Oh, your makeup? Um, you said? Yeah, I think it was like a new moisturizer. But oh yeah, I texted God. my producer and I said, 
uh this is what i look like right now so i was like keep me off of air today please <laughs> oh my gosh so please I, you know i did my job but it was you know i couldn't really be on air. oh no yeah, it, was, it was wild it was funny too because i did like a one of those like virtual visits with a nurse uh-huh. and she was like oh well we can get you some medicine but she's like but it'll probably go away on its own like is it gonna affect like your work and i was like yeah yeah it's like kind like, of like <laughs> Like the definition of my work, yeah. yes. Dang, no, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay, I I have not had a, a reaction like that. Like I feel like most people have not gone with anywhere. Yeah, you're lucky. I think but you have really sensitive I'm not, skin, honestly. Yeah. But, uh, what are you allergic to? Um, I'm allergic, are you allergic to anything. I'm allergic to leave and what just like medication, but I don't know. Like I what you're allergic to like the whole medication? Aleve. That is crazy. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, it's Thank weird. I get, like, a weird reaction. But as far as, like, products on the skin, I'm not quite sure. What about, like, vegetables? No, I, I as far as I know, I'm not learning. No, I think no. I'm lactose sensitive. I don't know. I feel know. like a lot of people are. We're not really yeah. supposed to, like, eat the amount of dairy. Yeah. Because every time I eat a little bit of, like, a little bit too much cheese, I'm like, oh, but. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite topping on your pizza? Ooh. Mine is cheese. I think, it's just cheese. I mean, yeah, it needs cheese. I mean, just like a good old slice of cheese pizza. Yeah, because it's the best. It's the best. Yeah, and Biggie's is. Uh, I, I like Biggie's a lot. I love Biggie's. I also like Donato's lately too. So I don't know if I ordered from Donato's. You should. It's it's like thinner crust, so it makes me feel better about myself sometimes. <laughs> Eating less bread, I don't know, but it's no, it's really good. What about Da Vinci's? Have you ever ate there? No. That place is good. That's in Atlantic Beach. Well, um, you're like basically my neighbor. You're in Ponte Vedra Beach. I'm in Atlantic Beach. Perfect. This needs to. This oh, we can go to Madour. Yeah, we should go there. We should that definitely go good. to Madour. Okay, we got a little sidetracked. Sorry. What is your definition of uh, confidence? Ooh, wow. Confidence. I know, that was like a deep one. That is deep. <laughs> um, it's hard to come by, like, honestly. Like, I definitely, I think I've gotten better about confidence. So I would define it as this is kind of just knowing who you are and knowing that you're doing the best you can of whatever right. you're doing. Like, yeah. honestly, that's like the least you can ask for because... Confidence is going to look different to a lot of people, but as long as you, you know, feel like you're doing the best you can and like you feel like you're your true self in that moment, that's confidence to me, I guess. I think that was so beautiful. <laughs> Thanks. That's a, that's a hard question. That was so beautiful. This is all Raphael. This is the email he sent us. Wow. So he is amazing. He's the bomb. He is the bomb. Um, okay. So who do you admire and why? Oh, let's wow. let's do let's break it up. We get like who do you who have you admired? Let's say in Jacksonville. Wow. Maybe a person specifically, so we can tie this it in. Is deep. Like maybe a teacher or a friend or Coco. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> or your mom. I, I think <laughs> who inspires me. I mean, again, kind of going back to one of his later questions was you know or earlier questions, excuse me, um, was you know there is a lot of tough news in Jacksonville. So there was a lot of days where I was covering really tough stuff. And um, I think that who inspired me the most here in Jacksonville are the people that have gone through just totally hell and back and have sat down with me and told me their story. And it just like their strength is so inspiring because, you know, you talk to these people who like just lost their brother or their mother or their son. Just the craziest things have, have yeah. happened. Yeah. And, you know, just the strength that they show through that grieving process and the, you know, the criminal justice process. It's, I mean, I interview them and I know those people very well, but it's the strength. And, it's, it's crazy probably to see. Yeah. That they can just, they even have an interview with you. I mean, when something, because right. they have, usually when you're interviewing, is that like pretty, it's like right after, I'm assuming, yeah. incidents and, or, you know, general. Yeah, there's some tough interviews, yeah, right after murders or, or deaths here in Jacksonville that I did. But even toward, you know, the end, like when, you know, the trials were happening or, you know, plea bargains were happening. All those stories, too, at the end were even crazy because, you know, those people have gone through years and years of that grief oh, and, oh my goodness, yeah. and fighting for justice. So I think those are some of the most inspiring people I've met is people going through well, something like that. That is amazing. That was even more beautiful. 
That was so cute. Oh, oh well, these are all from Raphael, and those were his questions, and they were amazing. Yes, thank and you. And I love him forever for that. Yeah, it was great. Um, Raphael, so he's he's a good friend of mine. He um, he's basically family. He's amazing. So he owns or he runs uh, Executive Medical Spa, also oh, okay. in John's yeah. Bluff. If you ever go down there. Um, but no, he's been he's been in my life for a while. He's awesome. So we should go see him soon. Do you you get facials? I'm assuming those are those. I are haven't amazing. gotten one in a long time. Oh my god, go I there. <laughs> That's what we we need to have like a girl date and go there. I'm so down. Um, I'm also on my next episode. Have you been to Hamburger Mary's? I no, I haven't. I have not either. I've wanted to go so bad. That's but I'm going. Yes, twenty first. Oh my god. <laughs> Of course, right? I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. No, so I'm going to have, I'm going to try, I'm going to, I'm actually going next week. Oh, you nice. can go with me. Yeah. If you want. And I'm, I want to have um, three of the queens on there for the next show. Oh, I since love we, that. Right. Yeah. That's and so um, since you've never been, it'll be perfect. Yeah. And you get told to go. I've never been either. Yeah, I've heard so many good things. I've we've talked Hammer about Mary's. going, but we just haven't gone yet. So. Yeah, Hammer and Mary's. Yeah. No, I, I need to. I think it would be awesome if we went, especially it being Pride. Yeah, it's right? a good good month to go. That'd be sure. such a good month. Uh, we should totally go. Have you been to the um, the Ponte Vedra concert hall? Um, no. So I can't, I drive by it. I'm like, I, don't I know almost if I've ever went been there. one time. I had a friend who had some extra tickets, but yeah. I've never been. I just thought of it because you said Ponte Vedra and I know that they're having like a pride thing, I think. Oh, okay. I went, I've been to the concert hall in Jacksonville in downtown Jacksonville. That, that place is right. awesome. Are it's you beautiful. a Jags fan? Yes. Yes. I mean, Cowboys forever for sure. Oh my God. You're like my mother. I love the Dallas Cowboys, even <laughs> though mom. they break our heart, our break, break our hearts every oh year. Oh my goodness. But so do the Jags, but I, I like them both. Yeah. I would yeah. say I'm a fan of both. Okay, For yeah, sure. no, I am definitely a Jags fan. Um, my first NFL game, uh, I guess, was a Jaguars game. And people get lit out there, Haley. Oh, I know, yeah. People can get lit. I went to a few this year, even though, again, it was even more depressing as the year went on. <laughs> <laughs> but no, no they're, it's, they're fun. I mean, everyone does, like, a good job with their tailgates and stuff before. Okay, and- yeah. Yeah. No, so um, I, I wanted to ask you the same question that I asked Fernando last time when we were wrapping up. Um, so if you could if you could tell yourself kind of what you know now into a younger you, let's say like a like an 18, 19 you, um, what would it be? Like what is what would be your advice to yourself or maybe some inspirational quote, maybe some maybe some really uh, very vague advice, like kind of like a riddle. But what would you give yourself knowing that you know now just about life in general? Fernando's answer was really cool about him being, you know, allowing him to be himself and to, you know, take his guard down and his, you know, former prejudices against other people. And I thought that was really cool. And I I think it would be really cool to see what you think in the same way, you being a female and a totally different demographic. So that's tough. Um, Oh man. I, I would mean, just tell myself not to drink that much. <laughs> That's always good advice. That's what I tell Drink myself water this between week. every shot. Eat <laughs> eat something high in protein before you go out. <laughs> <laughs> no bread. <laughs> Honestly, that's that's tough. I mean, there's probably a lot of things I'd like to tell myself. I think um just kind of letting myself like I, we're both, we thrive on, you know, relationships and other people and, you know, meeting people like we we're communicators, you know, we love being around people, but I think kind of telling myself, like, I don't necessarily need everybody, you know, like I need, you know, that core people in my life, okay, oh, but also yeah, of like, course. you know, who I am and, and the path that I'm going on, like, it's a good path and you don't need people to like necessarily add to it at all times you want people that add wonderful things in your life but you don't need everybody okay yeah that's awesome that's good that's I don't awesome know if that was kind of like all over the place no but, that made sense so yeah. kind of like you may want all of these things and you know but you don't need it all and yeah. you you really may, maybe should strive for a smaller maybe support group a, yeah, or smaller. maybe just needs in general yeah i just feel like 
a lot of people think, you know, the more friends you have, the more relationships or, you know, that's, you know, when you're thriving, but it's, it's really just, you know, having that core group and knowing that as long as you're staying true to yourself and you have people in your life that are adding to your life in all positive ways, like that's all oh. you really need. You don't need a bunch of people taking away from you or, you know, pulling you down or right like that, yeah so. are you closer with your family as you got older or are you kind of like yeah no. i always like to see kind of what the answer is for that because i feel like some people do get closer as they have gotten older when their adolescence wasn't actually at their best and but some people stray apart that you know as they get older so did uh did you get closer with your parents or yeah. how's your family life with that i think we've always been pretty close but i think as we got older like especially with my sisters i have uh, younger twin sisters who um, I've gotten close so with. So cool. Yeah, it's fun. Twins. They keep they keep it interesting. But um, no, I really think that we have um, gotten closer as time's gone by, and uh, they're actually coming in this week to help me move in. Yay! They're super supportive, and I love them. Shout out! They'll probably watch this. Shout out! They used to watch all my. What's their, uh, what are their names? Hits. Patricia and Jeff. <laughs> oh my! Oh, there's a boy and a girl. What? Is it twins? Oh, no, my parents. Oh, oh my sisters, too. Brittany your sister. Oh, yeah, yeah. Patricia and Jeff. We still love you. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to shout out to all of the you The whole fam. Um, no, um, not, they're like my whole family has been so supportive. We're all very supportive to each other and we're all very different, but yeah. it doesn't take That's away. That's so cool. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So they live in Jacksonville. So they, my parents live in Texas and then my sister, oh, they're, they're still in Texas. Yeah, one of them lives in Nashville and the other one lives in Kansas city. So they're all over the place. They split up. Yeah. The so, twins. Yeah. They, I thought that was like taboo. I, yeah. Kids. They're, they're really close. Oh, that's yeah, so they, cute. They went different directions for school. So what are they doing in school? Um, so Brooke is a music business or she was a music business major and she now well, she's that's cool. touring all over the country right now helping set up music festivals. Yeah, so. I wanna be cool, her I friend. Guess. Yeah, and then Whitney's, she's a NICU nurse, so she takes care well, of Well, she babies. is an angel. Yeah, Oh so my God, wow. Awesome. Those are pretty great human beings. Yeah. What so different. You? Do you feel like you're close with your family? Or? I, um, my family is amazing, and they are crazy Puerto Ricans, and I love them, and I feel like I've, yes, I 100% have gotten only closer that's awesome. As I've gotten older. So, and they're great though. I have a sister and a brother. Shout out to them. They're awesome. My brother was the only one that got a middle name. We did not. I don't have one. Isn't that oh, crazy? Wow. That's kind of special though. I like growing up, everyone's like, what's your middle name, bro? And I'm like, I don't have one, bro. They're like, what? Yeah, I think that's kind of unique. I'm like, I didn't know that was not, not a thing. But no, yeah, my, my family's amazing. They're super supportive and they've been super supportive throughout everything. That's awesome. So, yeah. But um, our uh, our time is uh, closing. Yeah, it's and fun I'm though. so grateful that you have came on my show to help me. I really am grateful yeah, for that. Of course. You're amazing, and you're you're so beautiful. And I wish you nothing but the best uh, in success and your journey. And I can't wait to see everything that you do. Yeah, we have to get pizza and go to Hamburger Mary's and all these things. I now. think that would be amazing. <laughs> so th thank you, everyone that has tuned in. We are cutting it short today. Um, we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.